The Seastar S30 Pro is supposedly a huge upgrade over the standard Seastar S30, but is it really? There have been tons of review videos all over YouTube and Instagram, but I wanted to make sure I took my time with this video to give you my real and unbiased experience with this telescope, show you some real results, and also find some things that maybe could have been a little better with this telescope. So let's get started. Let's start with specs, because the entire point of upgrading literally revolves around the specs. As we know, the standard S30 has an aperture of 30 millimeters and a focal length of 150 millimeters. The sensor used was the IMX662 sensor, which is the same as the Dwarf Lab Dwarf Mini, but it only has 64 gigabytes of storage. The battery capacity was only 6,000 milliamp hours, and the Wi-Fi range was limited to under 10 meters or 32 feet. Now, looking at the S30 Pro, again, it has the same focal length and aperture, which is to be expected, but there is a huge difference with the sensor. Rather than using the IMX662 sensor, which has a resolution of 1080 by 1920 pixels and a pixel size of 2.9 microns, the S30 Pro uses the popular IMX585 sensor with a resolution of 2860 by 3840 pixels and the wide angle lens shares the same resolution for high quality Milky Way shots, star trail shots, and even night lapse videos, which we'll dive into later in the video. But on top of that, while the S30 only has 64 gigabytes of storage, the S30 Pro doubles the storage space from 64 gigabytes to 128 gigabytes, making up for those larger shots and providing enough space for longer time lapse and night lapse videos. Now, something you might not be aware of is that the Seastar S30 only used a triplet APO system, but the S30 Pro uses a quadruplet APO system with ED coated glass, which maximizes the sharpness and clarity of your images. And speaking of sharpness and clarity, the S30 Pro wide angle lens has the ability to autofocus, whereas the S30 standard does not. And by the way, if you'd like an updated tutorial for the entirety of the Seastar series, Make sure that you let me know down below in the comments, like this video, and subscribe to the channel to stay updated because I do have a video on the way. Now, let's get started with some deep sky imaging. And as mentioned before, thanks to the larger sensor, we are now able to get wider field images than we previously could with the standard S30. Now, this means that larger deep sky objects like the Andromeda Galaxy, the Orion Nebula, and the Triangulum Galaxy don't require using the mosaic mode to image. Now we can save precious imaging time and fit it all into one single frame. Of course, if you wanted to use the mosaic mode to image the Horsehead Nebula and the Orion Nebula in one frame, you could. It actually did just that. Of course, here in Virginia, the winter skies tend to stay cloudy and not allow me to do the kind of imaging I like to do. So a lot of these pictures I've taken have very limited exposure time. So whoever is here in Virginia buying new astrophotography equipment triggering these cloud bursts, they stop. Now for astrophotography, if you do plan on purchasing this telescope after the video, which I do have a link in the description below, you're definitely going to want to utilize that equatorial mode. And to do so, you're going to need a good sturdy tripod. And you can find one on the Seastar website or you could go third party and buy one on the Amazon website. Now, if you do decide to go third party, you're going to want to make sure that you find a tripod that has a 3 8 inch mounting head. Otherwise, it will not work with your Seastar S30. So going back to the equatorial mode, something awesome that I really like about the S30 Pro is that it has a maximum exposure time of 60 seconds. And with this longer exposure time, you have a better signal to noise ratio. So your images look better straight out of the Seastar S30. And because it's longer exposures, you have less files to transfer to your computer if you plan on doing post-processing on there. Here are some images I actually took with the Seastar S30 Pro in equatorial mode using 60 second exposures. And likewise, here are pictures of the same objects with the S30 standard also in equatorial mode. The difference is honestly just ridiculous in terms of how much wider that field of view is. And let's be honest, it's still not a $3,000 astrophotography rig, but for $599, it's still pretty good. Now let's take a look at the Milky Way shots. And as we know, it's the middle of winter, so the core of the Milky Way isn't rising right now, but there's still other things like the Orion's Loop and just a general starscape. 
and the Seastar S30 Pro does a fantastic job with it. In fact, if you're doing Milky Way imaging, the S30 Pro has a feature that allows you to take up to an 8K resolution Milky Way shot, which is above and beyond my expectations. But remember, if you do plan on doing Milky Way imaging, it's advisable to leave light polluted skies and go to a darker sky zone to get the best results. Now, one thing I did notice, and this could just be a faulty feature as a result of this being a prototype sent to me by ZWO to review, but when I looked at my Milky Way shots, I noticed that towards the top of the image, the stars were oblong, and this could be because of some error with sensor tilt. But if you get your C-star and notice the same thing, let me know in the comments so I know it's not just mine. Another thing I really love about the S30 Pro Milky Way feature is that it has the ability to freeze frame the ground. So if you wanted to go outside and take a selfie with the night sky, you could, or if you wanted to take a picture of the Milky Way arm with the landscape in the foreground, you could do that as well. And the best part about it is that you don't have to do any editing later because the Sea Star will do it all for you. Now, the night lapse mode. The night lapse is possibly one of my favorite features of the S30 Pro, simply because I've seen a lot of night lapse videos of the Milky Way traversing across the night sky all over Instagram, and I've always wanted to do something like that. But of course, you have to keep in mind, it's not gonna have the same result. It's not gonna be as colorful because you don't have to do any editing on it afterwards, but it's still a really cool feature that I enjoy to play around with. And then there's the Star Trails mode, and I'm going to be honest, when I first heard about the mode, I was like, why would anybody really want to do that? But after I did it the first time, I understood. It's super cool when you point it at the pole star and allow it to run for the whole night, because it shows you in just one picture the Earth's rotation in action. Okay, so like the S30 and the S50, the S30 Pro does have the solar system function, but apart from the solar and lunar mode, the entirety of the Sea Star series lacks in the ability to image anything within the solar system. And that's not hating on these products, it's just a simple fact that none of these telescopes have a high enough focal length to be useful for planetary imaging. What you're seeing now is a video of Jupiter I actually recorded with my S30 Pro with the 4X digital zoom. And sure, you can see the bands of the planet, but that's because Jupiter that night happened to be at opposition, and Jupiter is literally the largest planet in the solar system. With pretty much any other planet, you can just forget it. But with Lunar, it does fantastic. And remember, it has a short focal length, yet the details that you see on the moon are sharp and clean. And that's all thanks to the built-in autofocus system. Now, we know that the 2026 total solar eclipse is coming up fast, so how does it do with solar? For starters, a big thing to keep in mind about this upcoming solar eclipse is that a wider field of view, like the Seastar S30 Pro has, is crucial during totality. Because during totality, you're going to want to image the corona, so the wider the field of view, the better. And the S30 Pro has an upgraded solar filter. Magnetic like the standard S30, but easier to remove when the eclipse reaches totality. And aside from the eclipse, the S30 can reveal great details on sunspots, which is fantastic if you're a solar enthusiast. So what do I really think about the S30 Pro? Honestly, I personally believe that it is the best smart telescope out on the market today. The night lapse, time lapse, and Milky Way imaging features are superior to any other smart telescope out there so far, and it's just so easy to use. Do I wish that my wide-angle lens didn't look like it had some sort of sensor tilt to it? Yeah, but again, it could just be a issue with this prototype edition. But other than that, I do think that the S30 Pro is a great upgrade from the original version and well worth a purchase. Being honest, I am still waiting for a higher focal length smart telescope from Seastar and ZWO, but who knows when or if we'll ever get one. So for now, I do think that it's well worth the purchase and well worth the price. But what do you guys think? Make sure that you leave your opinions down below in the comments because I would love to hear them. And if you are interested in getting regular updates and tutorials from the Sea Star series, make sure that you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out. As always, I wish you all clear skies and thank you so much for watching.